Hello and welcome back to this channel. Today's tutorial is about creating something with an isometric grid. First, we're going to go ahead and learn how to create an isometric grid. Next, we'll use the Live Paint Bucket tool to color our isometric grid to create a beautiful pattern. And then we'll use that base pattern and create a repeating or seamless pattern, which will look something like this. So let's just get started. To start off, first you'll have to create a new file in Illustrator. So I'm just going to file a new. You can choose your base artboard to be any size. It really doesn't matter. But just know that if you choose something that is six into six inches and you create the base pattern, which is six into six inches. So it's going to repeat three times if your artboard is about 18 into 18 inches. So you need to make sure that you keep your artboard or your base pattern really small so that you get a very nice repeating pattern when you choose something like an A4 sheet or something like that. Let's choose six into six inches for this tutorial. And if you click on advanced options, it's RGB because I'm not printing anything today. If you want to print, make sure you select CMYK. And for raster effects, I'm going to keep it at 150 ppi to make sure the file size is not huge. But if you intend on printing on it, make sure you select 300 ppi because that gives the best print results. Now let's click on create. We'll start off by creating the isometric grid. So basically there are many ways in which you can create this. You can actually use the line segment tool and create your own line segments and make sure you uh, rotate them and create this grid. But there's also another method which we're going to use now. So the method would be that you create a shape and then divide into columns and rows. So to do that, I'm going to click on my rectangle tool. It's not necessary that it has to be rectangle. It can be any shape, but rectangle would be much easier. Click and drag and make a rectangle or a square. It doesn't matter. You don't have to worry too much about it so that it's a little outside of the artboard. Okay, so once we have our rectangle or whatever ready, and now it's time to split it into grids. So go to object, path, and then split into grid. So this is the first step in creating the isometric grid. In here, you can give as many columns as you want. Uh, make sure you click on preview. But I think I'm going to give about 30 because that seems to work for me. You can change it to any number you want, you know, just experiment a little bit and you'll know and click on OK. So now it's time to copy it and make it into isometric grid. But before all that, let's go ahead to fill and make sure you click on none. And now we're going to copy Control or Command C to copy, Control or Command F to paste on top. This means there is a duplicate version of it right on top of it so you don't see it. And now we're going to rotate it a little bit. So you can go to properties. If you don't see properties here, it's on a window and then properties. And in here we'll give an angle of 60 degrees. So you can see it creates this nice variable right here. And now let's go command C to copy, command F to paste on top, and let's do a horizontal flip. And when I do that, you can see you have a very nice isometric grid ready, but it's not covering the entirety of the artboard. So I think it's better to do that. It's not really necessary, but click and select everything. Click, hold your option key down or alt key down, hold your shift key down, and then increase the size so that it matches something like this. All right, so you have your grid ready, but it's too dark. So we're going to go ahead and edit the stroke a little bit. And you can go here and make it as thin as you want. You can also give it a different color if you'd like. That's totally okay. So isometric grid is ready. And now it's time to make our base pattern. So our base pattern looks something like this. So I'm just going to bring this base pattern and the colors into my new file so that it'll be very easy to figure out how we want to color this artboard so but let's get the color on the other side don't worry i'll provide all the colors in the description box or in the blog post entry so that you can go ahead and pick it up from there and once you have the color codes it's very easy make some squares like this click on the square and in here for fill just double click on it and in here you get an option to input your hex code and you can just get all the colors like that so we have all the colors ready fortunately i have it in my library as well from which I think I'm going to be using that because it's much easier to control when it's in my library. You can also create a swatch out of this, but for now we're going to just use this. Okay, as you can see the outline for this, let me scroll in, is yellow because we have the grid yellow, but we can do that later. So that's not a major problem. Let's start by looking at this pattern here 
and if I try to place it here you can see it looks something like this so we're gonna try and replicate the same thing here so before you start painting your pattern you the main thing you want to know is you need to have the grid selected otherwise it won't work so I'm just going to keep it out a little bit and select these grids so that now it's selected and it's easier to use the paint bucket tool for the paint bucket tool you might not see it right here so if you don't even see all these options just go to essentials classic that is you can just click down and click on essentials classic and in here if you right click you will see the paint bucket tool hidden under shape builder tool you can also press k on your keyboard to get to it so now that you have it it's time to select things so the Stroke is going to be set to black because the grid is set to black, but that's okay. For fill, you can click on the fill and select whatever color you want to select. So for example, I want to select this. And then now you see this arrow. If you click on any arrow, it'll fill that box with that particular color. So something like this. Now I'm going to change the color to a little dark and paint these two triangles and a little more dark and paint these two let's go ahead and select some light yellow and paint these triangles here so this is totally up to you just experiment a little see what colors look good on these things see what color combinations look good go ahead and experiment a little bit to make sure that you know it looks pretty decent okay and now i'm going to go ahead and go to my lighter yellow that i have I think it's this one and now I'm going to go ahead and paint all these squares uh, triangles here make sure you don't paint like the uh, wrong ones because it'll give you a completely different pattern and now I'm choosing most almost orange color and I'm going to paint it like this so don't worry if you make a mistake just press command or control Z to undo your mistake now let's take the light most and I guess we're going to put it like this okay and let's take a little bit darker and make it something like this i'm going to take the darker one and and the darkest fill it up so your base pattern is what you want to decide you can stop here and if you feel like this is enough but I'm going to go ahead and uh, keep painting a little bit, maybe two more rows. Okay, let's paint here and now we'll take the darkest one and go ahead and paint it in the opposite direction of this. Here. And the lighter one. And then let's take the lighter. Let's take some yellow and some orange. I think I missed here. I think I missed the blue here as well. You see, it's so easy to miss the tiles, so make sure you're painting them properly. And let's go take the other yellow and fill this up. Okay, I think our pattern is ready. I'm just going to go ahead and click on my V or uh, selection tool just to make sure that I like my pattern. Mm, I think it's too orangey. I think I chose this orange as too dark. So I'm going to go ahead and fill it up with a different color. I think this looks much lighter. So as you can see, I modified it a little bit. So I have more lighter yellow. So if you want to do that, just go ahead and do that. This makes it much more brighter than this, as you can see it. So this is a bit of a darker color, but this is like really nice and bright. So if you like something like that, just go ahead and do that. But I'm just going to stop here because I think I like it. Okay, so our pattern is ready and I think I'm happy with what I have right now. So we're just going to go ahead and try to get rid of this isometric grid. Because if we use this directly into the pattern making tool, what's going to happen is this isometric grid is also going to get included in it. And we don't want that. So you can just go ahead and click and select the isometric grid with the pattern and let's go to object and expand and make sure you select object, fill, stroke, all three of them and click OK. 
nothing changes but that's okay we're going to change that next click on pathfinder you can find it under window and then pathfinder as well and in here click on merge and this should actually delete all of these but if it does not delete certain things so don't worry and you can always click double click on it and it goes into the isolation mode now click and delete and let's do the same thing here as well and it should be fine okay so now that we have our pattern ready it's time to convert it into a pattern but before that we need to change something here we need to give a stroke to this because it looks very plain and boring right now i mean you could do this if this is your thing so click on this and go to your stroke and we're going to give it the yellow color that we saw earlier but this is too thick i guess so i'm just going to click and select everything and make sure change it to 0.25 i think this looks pretty nice now it's time to convert it into a pattern so click and select go to object pattern and make and click ok in here i think the only thing that will actually fit because our pattern is a hexagon is hex by row and once you do that it automatically fits nicely and snugly you don't have to use any pattern tile tool to adjust it so once you're done click on done now let's check our pattern click let's make a big rectangle by using your rectangle tool and now you can go to swatches again you can find it under window and then swatches go ahead and you'll have your pattern here oh it sent it to stroke so i'm just gonna flip or you can also press x on your keyboard to do that and now when you scroll right in you will see your beautiful mosaic type of pattern ready so that brings us to the end of this tutorial. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also turn on the bell notification so that you get notified every time I upload something new. If you have any questions or anything that you want to talk about, don't hesitate to leave a comment and I will respond to you as soon as possible. I think I'll see you in the next video. Until then, bye-bye.